Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the What Did He Say podcast. It's your boy Chingo Bling. We are back. We got Javi Luna once again. Yes, sir. How's it going? In the building, Big Don. Yeah. Representing Corpus Christi, we got DJ producer Big Rod. In the background. And today, man, joining us in the Man Cave Studios right here, man, we have Everyday Street Gangster, ESG. Uh, that, uh, you, you you missed my intro like that, man. You come on. You you want to do? You want to help me with the uh, ESG stand for Eduardo Sosa Gonzalez. <laughs> <laughs> Eduardo Sosa Gonzalez. Eduardo Sosa Gonzalez. <laughs> he didn't know. Eduardo Sosa Gonzalez. ESG stands for Eduardo Sosa Gonzalez. Everyday serving God. Yeah, okay, I like everyday that. street games. I like yes, that. Sir. Entrepreneur spin game already. Egg sausage and grits. Oh, freestyle mm-hmm. king. Mm-hmm. That's not <laughs> I'm no longer the freestyle king. What? Who said you not? I'm not. I gave that title up. I'm the freestyle god. Hey, there it is. Oh, I it's it. levels. It's levels. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little level up. Well, yeah, like man. You. Hey, man. All you guys have so beautiful. Uh, I just didn't make the cut. All y'all have these bad ass <laughs> beers. Nah, my <laughs> shit need to get edged up bad. Nah, uh, y'all I just landed. Hey, I just landed hey, yesterday. Hey, man. Hey, yeah, Rob, it. Man. Rob got the Harvey Love that, going that, on. Man, Harvey that, Love has one. Oh, I Harvey think Harvey Love, Love beer just fake. Man, I'll be telling yo, you. Yo, <laughs> what's up with Harvey Love? Where's he been up to? The producer. Uh, he's working. He's a great producer. He's oh, working. He's man. Here. Yeah, yeah. Some of the. Let's just dive in, man, because it's like memory lane, and we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about comedy. We're going to talk about so much stuff. Because ESG well, also also does comedy, but bro Harvey Love man, yeah, yeah. we got to see if we can reconnect with him. Um, some of the coldest beats, yeah, Harvey Love and Monster out of the H Town man. Um, for those and all, for those of y'all that don't know, uh, we do have a sponsor of the podcast, uh, mm-hmm. MC M Three C Cattle, right? That's Mary's Creek Cattle Company. Ooh. Now they got some delicious grass fed beef, Ooh. and when we were talking about the podcast, he was like, man. You know who'd be a really good guest on the music side? He said, you know who'd be a really good guest? He said, you want to talk about some good music? He said, if you have ESG, Pop. he's like a huge fan, man. Shout That's out real. to Mary's Creek Cattle Company. Already. Grass-fed Pop. beef. Yeah, let me get some uh, of them bulls. <laughs> get some Wago. All of that, baby. Y'all got a Wago or Wago? Wago. Shit, I don't know how Wago? you say Wago. Wago. That's how you get say it? Get some Wago. <laughs> Is that how you say it? That's how I would say, yeah. Wagyu, right? Yeah. Wagyu? 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 Wagyu. Wagyu, you're being too extra. I'm being okay. too extra. Let, just, let, just let me get some, uh, you know, some top seller. <laughs> some seller. <laughs> it's all I need. So that, I'm so happy to be here, my brother. Uh, how, how would they say it in Louisiana? Like a little bit of a Louisiana Man, I, type accent. I never, I, I never got to eat brisket mm-hmm. as a kid. Okay. Mm. I was mm-hmm. poor, poor. We was in the projects, mm-hmm. you know, real, real, we was real poor. Only barbecue we ate was leg quarters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I worked at a Mexican restaurant with my mom. I was 10 years old. True story. I never seen a Hispanic person in my life until I was 18. There it is. But <laughs> I worked at a Mexican restaurant as a kid. What? I had a Mexican restaurant that was no Hispanic people in that part of Louisiana. I'm right on the border, almost to Mississippi. My hometown, Bogalusa. Mm-hmm. It was a Mexican restaurant. I grew up n- not eating enchiladas. Wow. Guess why? Why is that? True story. Every time the trays would come down, I had to help my mama wash dishes. My, we, we was real poor. And there was the enchilada trays, and they were so damn greasy. Uh-huh. So I, I grew up, I don't like enchiladas. <laughs> For real. That's True a hell, story. Hell of a plate to clean. Yeah. 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 But yeah. once I taste them, I'm like, damn, yeah. it's good as hell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great, great, so, great so who eat, not great to clean so up. So who was running sure. the restaurant, bro? Uh, a white lady. Wow. Hustle. Yeah. I had never seen nobody Hispanic. It was great. I can't say. It was great food. It, I'll say it was great food, but I can't say authentic until I got here. Because, you know. You know, like I go to Los Cucos. I don't know if you know. Yeah, that. my wife loves yeah. it. My wife and her family, they I love that place. place. I go to um, I go to Papacitos for the Americanized way. Yeah. If you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't do the Taco Bells and Taco Cabana. I'd rather do a taco truck. Okay. So you think I'm lying? Eduardo Sosa Gonzalez is my name. <laughs> Shout out to Thea and Tito. Okay. That's uh, Young Easy, uh, great young rapper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, North Central. That's his his aunt and uncle, mm-hmm. right? They gave me my first big plate of authentic. Um, I'm talking about it was fajitas, brisk, everything. And I said to myself, 
there's no way all that meat is tender. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I ate the hamburger first. Yeah. The hamburger was good. Yeah. I got hungry. Man, I tasted that fajita and that steak. I said, there's no way in hell. He marinated the shit out there. I say, God damn, this shit is so good. You know what I'm saying? So you are, you know, you know. You, you know what's crazy too, man? It's fajita is like the toughest meat on was, the couch. It was the scraps, man. man. It was it's, the scraps. I just, that's why I didn't eat it first. I'm like, that shit going to be hard as fuck. It was so tender and good. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. ESG at Water Sosa Gonzalez. Not, not the way I barbecue, it, how you chewing, man? How you chewing? Because like <laughs> I can't barbecue. No shit? Yeah. I'm you, trying to learn, you, man. Like, because I'm not, like, Louisiana people cannot barbecue. Okay. Don't get it twisted. Okay. A lot of people think I'm from Houston. Mm -hmm. My dad lived in Houston. Yeah. Uh, you know, my, my uh, career started in Houston. Mm -hmm. But the beginning of my career as a 13 year old young kid, Rapping was in out, outskirts of New Orleans, Bogalusa. That's why I started it. You yeah. feel me? Yeah, yes, sir. And but um, my real roots, you know. I so I'm a lot Texan. Yeah, half Louisiana, half Texan. Yes, sir. Boss hog, hot boy. <laughs> boss hog mean I was boss hog outlaw with yeah. Slim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hot boy. Yeah. Cash money. So my new mantra. Boss Hog Hot Boy. I like a that. song for that. I like that. And uh, didn't, didn't um, for one, you did some business with, with Drake yeah. also, right? Drake's, yeah, like, like the hip hop guys, if you're true to the game, the hip hop guys will save your life and keep you in the game. Um, I get an email out the blue. I was like, hey, we working with Drake. He wants to, uh, he's sending a couple songs over. He wants you to, uh, you know, check them out, see if you like them. And work out a deal with you. So I tell you know, I tell him, I say, man, Drake sent me email. I like, man, that ain't no real email. Drake mm -hmm. ain't seen you. That, that ain't no real email. I'm like, you know, like, man, that's clickbait. Yeah. You know, everybody, you know, yeah, yeah, the yeah. whole house. Like, mm -hmm. nigga, you, you getting food. Mm -hmm. yeah. So click that, you're going to have a virus. Yeah, on you yeah. so, to get so, your so, whole identity. Yeah. So uh, they say, don't let nobody hear the song. Man, I clicked on the song. Oh my God. I hear Wayne Andre. I said, huh? There is a God. Because I was a stay home rapper. What meaning by that was I wrote Wanna Be a Baller, never got credit. A lot of people don't know that. Um, you wrote the hook? I wrote the hook. Um, developed a lot of other artists and worked with a lot of other artists. A lot of people don't know that. But when I had my son, uh, King Bryson, 2000. I had a daughter before that. A lot of people don't know in Louisiana. But when I had my son, I would go do my concerts, come straight home, do my concerts. He would play my. So I never did travel like a normal rapper would. I was, you know, he was a preemie. I was trying to be a father. I was trying to get out the streets. So I was a stay home rapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind. Yeah. You know. Eh. So when you. Become a stay home rapper. You sit on the couch. You lose some of that intensity and the grind that I had when I first started. And so here I am, about five, six years from a hit, and I get that email, and that what it is. And when I get the song, I'm like hell yeah, fucking right, it's Drake. Bam, that was just motivation, yeah. momentum. Go back. Next thing you know, I drop South. I still holding, which is soon to be platinum, independent. That means I got a song, started from the bottom, now I'm one of the greatest do. With platinum like Travis Scott and Lizzo with no radio. Yeah. Southside still holding. Swinging and banging. Swinging I mean, and banging. The, the project was slim, was classic as uh, well. Balls all I lost. There's so many bangers on there. What? Uh, working with, uh, what was Tall Dude, man? Light skinned Tall Dude. What was his name again? Uh, Sinclair. Yeah, Sinclair. Uh, me and his, yeah. yeah SES. Yeah. Slim E. Seeing, yeah, yeah, yeah that you know, was in the seeing. Southwest Wholesale days. Southwest Wholesale, I just talked about them, man. Made a bunch of money with them, bunch of money with them. Hits, yeah, hits, hits, hits. The dunk, dunk, bump, bump, bump. Oh, oh shit. Guess what? <laughs> and then the, what's, and then, cra what's crazy? Uh -huh. Youngster, them didn't pick that beat. They heard the beat before us. Yeah. Sean, uh, Sean Blaze did that beat, and uh, we see now. I hear the beat. 
You vibe. Mm, I said, man, so, mm, mm, mm. And that's how we come up with that. Pow. But before that, me and Slim had two songs. Brazen Face. Yes. Candy Cody Scary. <sighs> There was a lot of beef between the North and South. And, you know, by me being from Louisiana, the earth is my turf. That mean I hung my I had family members in Fifth Ward uh, and the South Side. My dad lived in Mo City. So I hung everywhere. I was a, If I was born in Houston, I probably wouldn't have hung everywhere. Mm -hmm. But by me being from Louisiana, I hung everywhere. Yeah. So I'm like, man, all that switch hours. A lot of other HUC members didn't rock with switch hours. I, I, Mike Watts was at the radio station So was, I said man I'm gonna do a song with one of them I Fuck yeah. all that But beat you say bring me the tall one I say, <laughs> I say Who the one with the deep voice I say, Yeah yeah I say yeah. his name Slim Thug Yeah the one with the deep voice I Come said on. let's get on some Slim pull up You know what I'm saying ah. Slim been a guy <laughs> That boy pull up the big old, I ain't never seen a uh, Bill Buckle Ice style He pull up the big Ice style Bill Buckle uh, Fam We do Brazen Phase do, 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 do. Nah, not that one. Okay. Praise for you. Oh, that's the one I'm saying. When I come down, I'll, I'll be, be chunking up the north. north. When I come down, I'll be <laughs> chunking up the south. Bam. It resonated so good in the city. We did another song, Candy Cold Discourage. No, no, no. Then we had a concert in Dallas. And uh, Slim was like, man, look, I'm with Switch Eyes, man. There's like 12 of us. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to do my own thing. I want to do something called Boss Hog Outlaws. I said, well, shit, you know, I'm having a little problems with Rickshaw right now. Hell, let's do our own thing. And that's like how we a, like got a side the group. Yeah, that's how we did. Man, y'all had so much chemistry and like so many bangers came out of there. And even the, uh, I mean, even the Rec Shop era. Like Rec I, Shop I remember era. when, um, I mean, you had a fire albums with them. Hey, man, I had City Under two, Siege. City Under Siege. Two Shot on there. Man, that song's so hard with Two Shot, man. And, you know, me and Big Mo first hit, bam, man. Like yeah. man came on Big Mo at him, but you know that, I made that up. I freestyled off of whoa. Hey, that man, bro. Paint to the dun, end. Dun, like dun, 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 dun. Man, I remember. Look, I was going. To, I was going to. Uh, I was in college in San Antonio, and I was like coming home to visit. What you went to UTSA? No, nah, Trinity. Trinity. Yeah. So, so I was coming home. I was driving, and I just missed home. I missed the music. I missed everything. Uh. And on the radio, boom, put it on ninety-seven nine. They're like. Uh, Brand new from Rec Shop, you know, ESG, Big Mo, da da da. And it was that, you know, I, I was like, oh, they flipped the whoa. I was like, they fucking flipped yeah. whoa. And it's like, man, oh, holy shit. Like the fucking verses, the energy, pokey. Yeah, that was hard. Oh, man. That, that was, was a, that was some next. Shout level. out No D. No, no D. D, baby. No D orchestrated that. You know, No D is like a great um, A and R. You feel me? And um, that's what it was. We were just driving his every shop. You remember uh, Sali Williams? Of course I remember Sali. I never got to get no beats from Sali. Sali came, like, uh, right after me. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Like It might know, be his boy. Just tell him he could come. Like, Sali came right after me. So I didn't get to get rap right on Sali. None of the Sali tracks at that time. You feel me? But yeah. Sali was a monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I got to work with him. Uh, shout out to Sali. Uh, Carnival Beats, mm -hmm. and um, and he would tell me stories. He said there was a well. I, I got to visit Rex Shop because mm -hmm. I was a college radio DJ. So I got to go uh, pick up some uh, Miss Laura. Gave me some T-shirts and posters. <laughs> um, got to interview Big Mo. He actually fell asleep during the interview. I was yeah, like, yeah. damn. I was like, I suck at radio. He went to your father. Big Mo fell asleep. Miss Cruz, stand yeah, up. They, yeah. He was fall asleep. Stand up. I... <sighs> Damn. The drink, baby. Man, man. The drink, for real. He, well, say, I was a college, I was a college radio DJ, uh, and what? I was like, uh, Miss Laura, is he all right? I got scared. I was a little bit kid, uh, and she, she was like, oh, they were in the studio. She was like, uh, Mo, wake up, Mo, wake up, for real. And then he got up like a. Um, he you know, like, like when up. you take a nap and somebody annoys you, so oh, he got oh, up and oh, he mad when he like he didn't up. feel like doing it, right? It was like inconvenient, so he he got up, got a little uh, ice cream out the fridge and. <laughs> <laughs> he like sat down and ate his own ice cream. I was like, "All right, so." Uh, <laughs> so I was like, "So you be singing, huh?" It's kind of he's like, "Yeah, my style kind of like Nate Dogg, you know. It's kind of like kind of like Nate Dogg." Yeah, but, and like, like Big Mo. Wait, hold on, Big did, Mo was did, totally. Did he know there was ice, like he was at your studio? No, it was at, at Rec Shop Record Studio. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And there was yeah. a nightclub next I was, I was, door. I was like, "How did he know there was ice cream in the fridge?" Yeah. <laughs> I he helped he was himself. At your radio hey. studio. <laughs> that was Big Mo. Big Mo was. Hey, R.I.P. When we do, when we do, we had a concert. If you got 
multiple days, right? So this day we in this city, the next day we in that city. Check out time. You know how the song, we gotta go. Yeah. Check out time. Big Mo would not open the door until 5 p.m. Oh, after they check out 11. He's not opening the door until 5 p.m. Yeah. You can't get him out the door. Boom, 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 boom. All day long. You're not going to hear a word till 2 p.m. Mm-hmm. So by 2 p.m., 3 p.m., he finally, what's up? Man, you know we got to go. What's up? <laughs> then they finally answer the phone. All right, I'm about to go. That door about four thirty, four forty five. They done charged you again for the room. What? And you, you I was I was late for the next next show. That's how big Mo was. Eesh. Another big Mo story. We was this when drink finally disappeared. It was it was getting um, like a drought. It was about to be a drought. We was like in Arkansas. We only found the three. Like like people don't understand like the drink culture. Certain cities and states you go to that has certain sodas, like Louisiana was famous for Boggs Red. That was a soda called Boggs Red. It's, it was amazing with drink. They didn't sell it in Texas. In in Arkansas, they had like a sliced peach or something that didn't sell in Texas. So we, we got there, we got the sliced peaches. We couldn't find no drink. We only found the three. We go to the store to get the sodas, come back, big motor. I ain't gonna lie, my stomach was hurt. I drunk it all up by myself. The three like, ounces? He drunk all the three ounces. I'm like, Big Mo, why you do that? And, and like, if you drunk, like, if you come in there walking, like, say, he come in there and say, man, I drunk a four last night. You're like, I vote. That ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> I drunk a pint last night. A pint yeah, to the head. Like, yeah, like, screw a pour six. Like, people don't understand. Wow, six ounces. In a 20 ounce. Like, people don't Muddy. understand. Like, nowadays, people that drink, drink. <laughs> We'll pull one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. They do it for the look. They got the little double cup and maybe shit. Maybe a deuce <laughs> in a 20 ounce. Maybe. Screw a pull six in there. It'd be so muddy. And so, like, people don't understand how good drink was. I told somebody the other day, <laughs> like, when I first was, like, like, I wasn't, like, you know, my OGs were millionaires. And they, and they drug the choices were weed and coke. Mm-hmm. And snort, you know. So, mm-hmm. yeah, unfortunately, yeah. that's what I was raised. You know, smoke weed and they snort. Yeah, syrup came around. I didn't really like the syrup as much. I didn't drink as much. But when this, when we started really sipping, I'm telling you, I'm two two hundred fifty dollars every day. Oof, every day. Oof, it didn't bother me. Two fifty a day. A oh. two fifty to one fifty. Every day, Harvey, how that's, you that's, feel about that? Big mold, somebody else, they, they like 500, 600 every day. Shit. No problem for years straight. Uh, every day, so you can get kind of like millions of this. Like, so you grinding, you hustling, you making bread. So, you got you might be selling 10 paints, you gonna drink one, you might be selling this and then that's how we was. People don't understand, you know, like, like. They have two hundred fifty thousand dollars in the cold too. Mm-hmm. Right around was nothing. That was like normal. You feel me? Like it was always thirty or forty thousand dollars hidden in my back somewhere, and people didn't know that. That's they thought we was like regular rappers, but we weren't. We were boss, big boss. That's crazy. You feel me? We were like we all like everybody stay in hotels forever. Yeah, hotels every night. Like like I, I remember I seen Dame Dash talking about they don't like wear. Uh, Boxes and shit over. That's all we did. They don't wear what? Like socks uh, and t shirts and boxes. Oh, got it, got it. That's how we used to do. Yeah. Show up town every day. New outfit. Pow. You feel me? Go go to uh, Target or Walmart or somewhere. <laughs> get a whole bunch of white tees and uh, new boxes and socks. Hotel, hotel, hotel. Pow. Everybody eat. That's just how it was. You know, drink went from. Hundred twenty five dollars a paint, yeah. two fifty, three fifty a paint, four fifty a paint over the years, six hundred, seven hundred. Especially paint. as it got more mainstream and you know how much everybody. a pound you know how much a pound of cush used to cost back in the days when you smoke we we used to smoke the burner, the shit, the gas with burn that shit was eight bands, six thousand for a pound. Ooh. We used mm. to smoke that like when the, like when Rick Ross did his first concert here. Yeah. Like we were like, here here goes zip. We paid six hundred dollars for a zip what? of Kush back then. 
<laughs> like I would spend like one seventy five a day, one seventy five a day that, on a quarter. That's uh, crazy. That's how, that's how we we was ballers. That's you crazy. Feel me? Like, habit numbers, like, man. The jury, <laughs> habit numbers. I, I, I habit like mad. the jury, the jury that we like, like, like the money that yeah. we didn't have A and R's and record companies. It's giving us budgets. Oh, I'm too like, sure. I'm too like when the other man. people got deals, like when Mike Jones and them got <laughs> deals, and they were going to Johnny and spend like I remember Johnny was like, I charged Mike Jones 125 thousand for this beat. I'm like, what? Like, yeah, we would do this. We was doing the same thing. That's crazy. Without a deal. So imagine that. You feel me? Independent artists, grinders, and hustlers on the side. We built. We built that legacy. Didn't know there's niggas to say what they want to say. You can't not go find no rapper with a mouthful of diamonds before me. You can look, try, mm. research. You're not going to find it. Everybody had a chip, one piece. We, me and my dogs, me and my partners, we went to a, another jeweler. We get, the, we get the teeth made. We go to Johnny. Johnny, I don't want one diamond. I want all bag ass. I want all day. What which John? Kings? Kings John. Okay. We had I done had mine about six, seven times. So the grill that we had, by the time it resonated to other people, T I, Rick Ross, and all these people was paying thirty, twenty five thousand for that grill. That same grill I was paying sixty five hundred for. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We built that. Mm. There's no way you can look that had the jury that we had, the mm. customized jury, I don't give a damn what you say. You can go research it. You're not going to find the customized jury nowhere in the world the way that we had it. Of course, other people had pieces and this. It was all but like it was like a like a, like a Jesus piece. It, is, uh, it was like it wasn't mass that. produced. It, it, wasn't, wasn't it wasn't this. It yeah. wasn't this type of these type of these type of styles. Yeah. That's why Rick Ross, that beast, Johnny. They all had to come here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why you think TV Johnny came became TV Johnny? You copied the name from King Johnny. There was so much demand for the Johnny the name. The Johnny. It was like, you're Johnny. I'm Johnny too. I'm hey, Johnny go, too. Hey, come mm -hmm. on, I'm Johnny. Like, yeah. oh, the so Johnny I on, heard about? So when you're on the flea market, everybody's going to try to stop you before you get, like, like you know, like Boston. It's, it's like a woman with they go get her hair done. She's not gonna go to no other stylist. Mm -hmm. Same with you. All the new little people coming. Hey, I do watches. I do. They all trying to stop you. Yeah. It's like a parade. I'm like, I do jury, jury. She, she is now. We going back here to Johnny. Yeah, get the hell out the way. We're Johnny. Yeah. Way. As far as the jewelry habit, like, because I'm still hung on about two fifty. Huh? He, 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 he's trying I'm, to hear some of uh, the jewelry man well, more of the what, jewelry man. What was the jewelry jewelry habit? Like like you you catch a, a Norman a Norman cat in the, in the hood. Uh -huh. He spent fifty thousand dollars on this piece. And how often would he do that? Like you you, know, you piece, never know. Just whenever. Just whenever, whenever it strikes. Seventeen you. seventeen five, twenty two five, ten bands. Two fifty a day is crazy. I got a seven dollar day taco habit. Got me thinking about changing my whole life. <laughs> you know what right I'm saying? That's 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 and, how life was. You know, you some of that math. <laughs> you know, that's how it was, baby. Do do some of what's the taco? Tell me, break down the taco math, Javi. Like, what's See, your habit? Yeah, yeah. Which, what, taco math. Ma wake up. I mean, if you want if you want bacon and stuff, man, you are paying three fifty a taco now. There it is. These it went up. Are wild on these streets, man. <laughs> y'all y'all thought jewelry got inflated. Mm -hmm. Y'all thought yeah. drink got inflated. Yeah. I'm just think about the people that waking up like you take three fifty paint. Yeah, man. Three fifty paint. Three fifty pound. Yeah. <laughs> if it hates eight dollars for two tacos, man, I'm gonna be like, man, yeah. keto can't be that tough, man. Hey, I'm, I'm gonna... he, he, he's probably not lying. I got a homeboy. He's an OG. We pulled the Popeyes the other day. True story. That's all I'm gonna tell. True stories. I'm 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 gonna buy the food anyway. He like, man, how much for uh, one piece of chicken? He just <laughs> he just arrogant like that. So the guy, the dude, is like, it's like two twenty nine. Man, too. What happened to the two, two, two for nine nine cents special? I said, man, I don't got that no more. You know, mm -hmm. he like, man, shit, I ain't finna pay no two twenty nine for a piece of chicken. You know, <laughs> I said, man, I'm buying the chicken. Yeah, I'm ready to go buy my own chicken. I said, nigga, <laughs> you gotta go home, chicken. cook it by degrees. Do this. I said, so you really don't want no chicken? No, <laughs> sir. Give me a chicken sandwich and a two piece. 
I'm not finna go home and cook and all this shit. I'm gonna pay the extra for this man. <laughs> Nigga, right. you are tripping. But that's how some people are. He Dude. would not. It, this nigga drive to four gas stations. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, the motherfucker there too high. Yeah, nigga, too high. We the fast folks. Nigga, we gonna run out of gas. It'll make a mental note. Right. See that I, one? when we need, we coming back to. this How you one. doing the saving two? Take your ass to Kroger and get the ten cent off. <laughs> yeah, some people like that. You know, that's crazy. That's how my mama is with sodas. Like she go, my mama go buy everything name brand except mm-hmm. drinks. I've drunk every kind of name. I, 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 I grew up as a kid, like, I would have a drink called, like, a Super K, <laughs> you know, like, Big Pepper. Yeah. Like, what yeah. the fuck is a Big Pepper? Dr. Thunder. <laughs> Dr. Yeah, Thunder, yeah, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. yeah, my mama's not, I ain't paying for that, but she's going to pay for my tissue. She going to get the expensive tissue because yeah. she don't want that ass to itch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but sodas, she's she going to buy your money in the right ass, places. So, yeah. Yeah. Hey, so let me ask you this, E. Um, your, your skills for like controlling the crowd and rocking the crowd, how did that tr- translate into comedy? Um, I didn't want it to translate to comedy. You know, I wanted, you know, somebody dared me to do stand up. The, 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 the joke, uh, what joke, joint, joke, joke joint, joke yeah. On 45. Yeah, yeah, We yeah. passed by there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, female. Well, you know, it's gone, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A female cousin of mine. She's saying, like, they do come, come in there. You always talking shit to me. He talking shit to me. I dare you to go in there and do stand up. I said, what? Pull over. I'm finna go in there right now. <laughs> right now. And I didn't. I had, had butterflies. You know, I didn't go in there. Like, like a month later. I said, yeah. fuck it. I'm gonna go in there. And I went in there. It went, it went over well. Damn. I hit about four or five other open mics just trying it. I always was retarded cracking jokes. You know? <laughs> yeah. And they started making me go last mm-hmm. everywhere I went. That's when I knew I had it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, yeah. And then um, the very beginning, like one guy was like, hey, I'm going to give you $750 to come over here. Another guy, I'm going to give you 1500 to come over here. Mm-hmm. And another guy was like, you come to my room, I'm going to give you $50. So I was like, damn, something ain't right. I can, you know, I didn't understand the comedy game. I know the rap game. I don't know the comedy game. Mm-hmm. You know, so... A dude tell me like, "Hey, you can't be disrespectful. Mm-hmm. You have to hit all the rooms." Mm-hmm. I said, "Well, bro, I ain't going back to that motherfucking room. That nigga gave me fifty dollars." Yeah. He said, "But still, you know, they they respected it." I said, "I don't give a name, man. I come from the rap way." Yeah. I said, "I tell you what, I'm just gonna book the venue." Cause I went, but a comedian told me he like, "Look, you going about it the wrong way." He said, "They gonna look at you like you skipping the line." He said, you already too funny. Yeah. They going to look at you like you didn't beat the block. You didn't, you know. i like, yeah. well, I beat the block for 20 years in rapping. Yeah, It's the same thing. He said, they're not going to look at it like that. He said, the comedians that are being your mentors now are not going to answer the phone for you Absolutely. in three months. That, that, that's what happened to Ralphie May. And that's what really happened to me. Ra- Ralphie, they didn't Ralphie answer the May phone pissed people off because they felt like he jumped the line by so going straight I said to back, I said yeah. back, I said, you know what? I'm going to ease into the comedy. I'm gonna take my time, yeah, you know, because I still right. got a lot of shit to say in rap, and I want to. I don't want to be too funny, because I'm too gangster. <laughs> See, that's my problem, man. <laughs> don't let Matter the funny fact, shit get you fucked what, up. What is it? Can I spike? Can I spike my? Yeah, there's another glass right there. Uh, shout out to Pie Tequila, man. They actually sponsoring the show, man. This that's delicious. Lie. Straight out of Mexico. I'm going to try to buy it first. They taking mm-hmm. the uh, Texas love, tequila market by ESG, storm. Eduardo Sosa Gonzalez. Edua- he about to turn into Eduardo Sosa Edu- Gonzalez. Uh, Eduardo Sosa Gonzalez. Pie tequila is going to get it. I'm going to hit that money. I am a narco mafioso. He about to tell a story. Oh, como quiero. As soon as he pulled up, he's like, man. You My know. amigo wasn't the wavy when he first became a soldier. Hold on. His very first regalo was an old gold pistola. I used to go to El Supermercado, give me mucho bacon soda because I cook a lot of coca. Ah. Hey, there it is. <laughs> there it is. That shit is good. Yeah, it's delicious, ain't it? <clears throat> <clears throat> I, got, I got to do one more. 